Alrighty, it's basically Monday podcast. We're back again with the season finale because we're going to be taking a little break after this, but we're going to try and give you a good one. Who knows? But we got the normal crew, Gouda, John, myself, Valero. Uh, how's it going, guys? What's What have you guys been up to this week? Uh, nothing. This. <laughs> Yeah, podcasting, 24-7. What about you, John? Um, I've been uh, taking a Google certification class recently. So oh, I've, shit. Yeah. A this... Google certification class? Like, what, is, what does that entail? Certification for what? Uh, it's for data analytics. So I, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, getting back into the, like, job market in that field. Um, and, yeah, I just obviously I've – not had a job for a while so i was thinking of like ways i can show that like obviously i'm still like (laughs) mentally capable of like doing that type of work so google has a bunch of different certifications on a bunch of different things um for like even if you're all from like a beginner all the way to like you know super super um experienced so I figure just taking that type of a course will let, with my ex- previous experience, obviously, will let people know that I can still do it. So yeah, I've just been going through like, it's just all online and it's all open book. It's just like teaching you what data and analytics is about. So a lot of stuff, like I just- what data? Like any data set, like if, if you, like if you work in data and analytics, you just work for a company and you do different things with the data that they, that they need for the business. So to teach you that, they just make up different, they just make up data sets and then like have you do things with them and like teach you about how to think about it. So it's just like, that, I, I don't even understand. Like, <laughs> like, can you give me like an example, I guess? I, yeah. I, so I can definitely say I've never worked with data as you're describing it. Oh, okay. That was, do you, do you know that was my whole job before? <laughs> I, I guess I always have been like, not 100 percent sure like oh okay exactly so you didn't you even did. i knew you, you didn't did even something know what i did <laughs> okay that makes like, more sense that i didn't know about but it's like yeah you just like look at stuff and say whether it's good and then you give them the yes or no and then that's it and then just, oh. that, just keeps going. <laughs> that just sounds like a drug dealer <laughs> whatever it is that's all i do i was like yeah, yeah <laughs> okay okay it. Okay, so my previous, the previous company I was with, basically they hired, or, or I got in a position where basically the leaders of the organization, they're trying to like measure how well they're doing and like what areas they can be doing better at. So in order to do that, they put, as they put all this information about how they are hiring people into this system, someone like me takes the data out of the system puts it in Excel, puts it in like some type of d- data visualization tool or something like that, and then just makes it all pretty for them and shows them what some of the insights are. So like, for example, if in a certain area or certain region, certain market or something, they're, it's taking them longer to fill positions for some reason. Like there might be some type of, there might be a reason in the data that I could show them to say like, yeah, this happens across, you know, maybe it's not just your industry, maybe it's you know, the whole state, maybe there's something about like the age or descent or like something's going on with the people there. Like there's a lot of different reasons. A lot of things happen. So basically they're just using the data to track how well they're doing. And then like, what can they do now that they know how well they're doing? Like, what can they do better basically? So how in the world is that not completely automated? I guess like, what do you, <laughs> because, like, yeah, yeah I, would, yeah, I, I would think, yeah, a lot of, I can understand why you would think that's automated, but it's, it's a lot more difficult to get a system to glean insights, uh, than you would think. It's also not super cost effective. Like if you had just an automated system, every time you want to change something, like for example, when some companies like for the system that has all their data, they are paying a third party for access to that system. So anytime they want to make changes on how they put their data in, they have to pay a fee just for that. So like there's a lot of maintenance that goes into maintaining systems like that. And it costs a lot less money actually to like hire people like me who can like 
have a conversation with you about what you want and know how to present it to you and to like people that you have to purport to in a way that's makes you look good basically i guess i guess like but yeah it's not it's not as eliminated as you think like okay first off where are you getting this data from then like so they have in a my, program, I'm guessing it's a, it's it's called an uh well in the industry I was in it's uh it was recruiting so like recruiting establishments usually use something called an ATS which is an applicant tracking system so anytime you apply for a job online all that information that you put in go behind the scenes it goes into this applicant tracking system so like there's a full right anytime you've ever applied anywhere online there's a full write-up on you with all the information that you ever put into that system it has it stored somewhere unless you for some reason can delete your account but like as long as you're an applicant you are being tracked through every piece like every piece of the process basically and there are people who you talk to like through that process who are moving you along uh the way so like an example is Danielle's job is a recruiter. She'll phone screen someone and that person in the system will be in a certain status that indicates to everyone who looks at their profile, okay, this is what's going on with them. They're in, you know, the phone screen stage. And then they might go to a hiring manager interview. Now you're in the hiring manager interview stage. So like all of those stages are tracked and behind the scenes, people like me would just grab all that data and then so that we can show our client that we're doing really well, we try to track like how long, for example, each candidate goes through each stage and then try to account for all of the little small nuances of why maybe we would not be doing doing well. So like, yeah, it's so not, go ahead. Are you making up, so when it comes to, so you get the data of how they've been performing mm-hmm. or just basically what they've been doing. It's, it's it raw, you, it's raw, it's just raw it, data. It's just the, like Excel spreadsheets. And you have to figure out why the anomalies are showing what they're showing essentially i guess yeah what, some sometimes what would make sometimes do yeah. they give you like a guideline of like what to check for or something or do they yeah say, every oh, google it and figure yeah, it out and then every, just show us what you find so every client is different uh what you're looking to track usually has to do with the uh they're called like KPIs, basically just measurements of that you are basically us and the client agree on paper in a contract when we first start to do business together of what we what the standards are that we're held accountable to. And a lot of those things has to do with the data that we get from that system. Right. So like some clients want to have all of their hires for a certain pay band all hired within 31 days of the position opening. So I have to go in and say like, okay, across this pay band, did we actually do that? And if not, what's the reason? You know what I mean? So like, I have to- But like, how do you find that reason? Like, how are you supposed to know? Yeah, so it, it's it, it's a complicated process. It's not, it's, I have to talk to people sometimes and like ask them like, what are like the recruiters, for example, like, are you seeing that we, for some reason, see um, like, higher times to uh get these people to take certain assessments like there might be a reason in in that sense so like when i look at the 31 days right for in that example and i let's say it took us like 40 days in some in some like section of the company it took us 41 days there might be a specific status that's the hold up in that process so like sometimes recruiters try to get a hold of hiring managers and hiring managers are really slow about getting back. So if they're sitting with the hiring managers to review for two weeks, that has nothing to do with our company. That just means the people who are supposed to be hiring them are, are dragging their feet. So like it's important for our company to be able to point that kind of stuff out so that we're not like held accountable for like what our what our client might be doing wrong. But it also presents an opportunity for us to say, hey, look, your your company is slow in this area. If you want people to be hired faster, these are some of the actions you can take to to make that happen. But it all starts with being able to show in the data that that's happening. That's interesting. I feel like so. So now that you're going to so back to this Google certification, that, that yeah. definitely clears it up, by the way, like, okay. I kind of understand like yeah. what you would do then. Right. So back to the certification thing. So Google, this Google thing, mm-hmm. what are you, like, you're just finding, it's just teaching you ways to, like, uh, well, like organize to, the data, essentially, to, and present it? To, to be, if, if you are completely new to data analytics, then yes, that's what it's aiming to do. For me, a lot, for me, a lot of it's review, because I was, like, actually in that job already, so, like, 
a lot of it I, I already know. So I'm really just taking it so that in per prospective employers can say, look, he took this recently, so he must be somewhat familiar with how to do this if he was able to pass the Google cert. But yeah, basically they show you how to do different things. They also do a little bit of intro to like uh, SQL language, uh, which I was doing a little bit of too with the data visualization tools. But like, yeah, it's all just like all the things you could possibly run into as a data analyst and how to be potentially the best data analyst that you can be by like using different tools and strategies. That's that's what the course is supposed to do. Interesting. <clears throat> so you think so you must like it if you're like thinking about doing this. Oh, yeah, I've always I've always liked it. I mean, I liked it even when I when I quit my other job. I was telling Danielle, I think um, I I really was sick of the environment <laughs> so like because of the environment i just wanted to be done with all of it and yeah i've i mean the I'm environment being the, the job yeah the, well the job that i was in i think rec recruiting is especially because you're held it's it's a it's more of a client-based game than it is a improvement game it's like I want to do whatever is in my client's best interest, whatever they ask. And that's basically what I was doing. So I was running back and forth all the time. And there wasn't a whole lot of time to like actually make things better. And that was the frustrating part for me in that in a role like that. Okay. Interesting. But if you're just so doing like... reporting for like a, re a regular company, like you have a, like, I was telling Danielle, like Danielle was in the same company I was in and she is in a completely new uh, company now. And like, just the pace is much less panicked, and and that's what I really want to experience in the in the data, like, segment of it. Because I've never experienced data that wasn't just like, I need it now. We needed it yesterday. Like it's it's all it's always been everyone's hair is on fire all the time. So I just never had time mm -hmm. to improve anything. Like there and there was a lot of stuff that I was like excited about improving. That was the the sad part of it. It was like I just never got to do it. Interesting, interesting. So I mean, yeah, maybe you can find. Like, I just looked up data analysts on Indeed just to get an idea of, like, what they mm -hmm. make, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's, like, some contract work. So, like, I feel oh, like yeah, you're a yeah. contractor, yep. you definitely can't be, like, rushed. I mean, you can to an extent, but it's yeah. a lot harder. So, like, yeah, and that's yeah, kind I of the... you might be able to find something that might suit that. And that's kind of the plan. Like, if I would want to try to, like, I think it's a big ask for a company to be, like, yeah, you've been out for like five years. We're just, just going to hire you as like a senior analyst because that's what you were doing before. Like, I don't think any company is going to do that. But like, yeah, I was Danielle was basically saying that she was like, there's a lot of contract work you could do and just clean up like it because you're not we're not worried about like benefits. We get all that kind of stuff through her job. She was like, you could just do contract work at your own leisure and still watch Mila and be fine. So I was like, yeah, that, that might be an option. Yeah, that's a pretty good idea right there. I think that would. Yeah. As long as yeah. they don't, yeah, they're not, like, the type of company, just like you said, that are going to be yeah. rushing you, like, all right, hey, we need you to get this report to us that we yeah. just told you about right now in 15 minutes. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm, and, I'm, and I kid you not, there was literally times where that happened, and that happened, it, there were times it happened on Saturdays, and I was just like, dude, you're Holy not, you're God, not paying no. me enough, like, and, yeah. and that's the other thing, it was, it was that and the pay, and I was just, yeah, it was, it was bad, so I just need to experience it. Yeah, I just need to experience it, like, in an environment that's not always getting in its own way. That's so funny. Yeah, that's how you know I'm a, I'm a small business owner who I, I have not made it to the big time yet. Like, I don't understand <laughs> that world completely. Because, like, as you're explaining to me the job of a data analyst, I'm just, like, I'm just thinking off a million reasons of why I wouldn't want to spend money on that position. Like, <laughs> like, can't the manager, the hiring manager, just like spend 15 minutes and just like print out a report and do this? I have no idea. Like, it probably not. No, I'm sure it's they, like no, more they nuance can't. than that. Yeah, they but really, like, they really just, cannot. It feels. <laughs> I feel like, like yeah, to spend. So like in our area in Wisconsin, like the average. <laughs> sorry, the average. Uh, Hiring and data analysts, like a level one data analyst, mm -hmm. makes somewhere between fifty and seventy five thousand a year, which yeah. is pretty good. So, so that's just so like, to, that's kind of insane. Like, it's like so to give you fifty thousand yeah. dollars plus any sort of other employee benefits and all the other crap yeah. that you got to pay for employees, mm -hmm. just to get it so some guy can send you a spreadsheet. 
yeah. on the data that you already have. Like, yeah. that yep. just seems crazy to me. Like, yeah. But, like, it doesn't seem crazy for a big company because they yeah, have yeah. money yep. and they have problems and they just need to throw money at it to solve them. So it's like you well, got to pay someone $50,000. Well, the, pro- the, problem as you get, so the problem as you get bigger is normally that people become more specialized because they have to. So, like – when you when you hire and because you were getting bigger you usually hire for that person to do a specific job you don't usually hire jack of trade jack of all trades especially when you get larger so like if you are a two-person company but you need someone to do payroll you would hate hire someone specifically for payroll like you wouldn't you might have them do other stuff but as you get a bigger as a company normally that person is spec it becomes much more and more and more specialized so that's what happens at big companies like they hire for very specific roles because they have a very specific need Interesting. But yeah, if you're small, like, do you really need? No, like, obviously not. You could do, yeah, like you said, you you could probably do, um, some of that stuff on your own. But like, in a big company, most people will have no, like, most people are just trying to keep up with the stuff that they're specialized in, and they still don't even have time for that. So like, they don't also have time to pull reports. That's funny. So like, when you were working, you said it was pretty oh oh wait 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 before you before you say that you said 50 to 75 today so that was a level one i was a senior reporting analyst and i only made fifty two thousand at my like peak like the the two years that i was a senior so yeah that was was also how many years ago though and that was in 2018 so 2018 so that was five years ago yeah so pre-pandemic so, I mean, they're probably, I'm sure the same job at the same company, they probably added another 10000 to that, probably. But that, but, but that's, again, but that's for level one. And there's no way what I was doing was level one. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's like, true. I, the, the sure stuff I had to... one people demanded to become yeah, higher by Like, now, the coding so language I had to anyway. know, yeah, the coding language I had to know just to, just to be able to, like, type in queries in the data visualization tools that we had... It like that's that's pe- that stuff people were getting paid like eighty to ninety grand now at most regular companies that aren't just like recruitment boot camps like the one I was at. That's crazy. That is just crazy. Yeah, I I can't even come close to justifying that in my head. But like, yeah, like you said, like when you got a ton of like of whatever happening, and you just need someone to like make sense of it and find it. But like, I guess yeah, that is the interesting part for me is how do you know i feel like so are there data analysts like when i looked up data analysts on indeed Mm -hmm. like it just says like there are some specializations like mail and order specialty and specialty pharmacy Mm -hmm. but most of them just say data center analyst data analyst analyst one yeah uh, business data analyst well the specialization uh, is in data it's not in any specific type of data data is data data is data but how are you supposed to figure out like i don't even understand how do you figure out what to figure out like like, what to get out of the data what they're trying to well you talk you you talk the company would ask you you talk you know you you talk to them you you talk to the leaders of the company who are asking for the report who are asking for your help They're, they're the way it goes is not just like i pull data for fun it's like there usually is some reports that they already have set up because everyone wants to have certain like check-ins with the data to make sure they're tracking the way they want to be tracking, right? So like every Monday, like there there usually is probably going to be at least two or three reports that we always pull because we want to make those people want to make sure like they want to see every week how their team or ho- whoever is tracking towards what their goals are. Then if there's individual requests. They'll usually set up a meeting with you and say, hey, there's some things that I'm talking to, to so-and-so about, and we want some data to, to behind that to, like, see if we're right, or we want to see if data if if the data for, like, people – like, I, the last example I was using was, like, yeah, if they are taking longer to hire at a certain stage. One leader asked me once, like, um, they told me, for example, they felt like one of the stages in their hiring process was, like, completely useless because they just felt like it didn't do anything because they weren't rejecting anyone out of that status right so people were like apply they'd have to like click a button to take this test but whether or not they passed the test they would still go to the next step it wasn't like taking anybody out so they asked me to represent that by using the data to say like this isn't helping you it's just adding more time so basically i went into the data pulled all of that shit, right and then just put made a funnel like a very visual shit so they can understand it and put the numbers for each for each 
step. How many people get to this step, this step, this step, all the way down the line? And basically, the step, the steps that they were that were in between, like the test and the next one, the number didn't change. Like if twenty thousand people went into the step, twenty thousand people came out of it, and okay. it was taking them five days to complete the step. So we're just wasting a whole work week on that step. So like data helped them tell that. So that after I gave her the data for that, they cut the step. Okay, I think I'm understanding that. So they give you what to look for. They give you the data and they say, hey, I have a feeling this is it. Go check if that's right. And that's what the data analyst. I thought they just give you data and they're just like, you know what? Find something good in here and just let me know. <laughs> Like, I'm just like, well, that, they do that like, they do that too that's called a, a quarterly business review when they want to just hype themselves up they're like yeah um if anything if there's any they always and they always end all the meetings for quarterly business reviews with yeah so all of the normal things and all the thing we just talked about and then yeah if you see any really good insights that uh really highlight how how well our team is doing yeah definitely feel free to include that i'm always like you want me to go fishing for good stuff like in the data so that you look good <laughs> But yeah, that's exactly what I mean, what it at is. least she told you that she was looking for something that made them look good. I didn't even, when I was first, you were first telling me that, I just thought they'd give you data and they're just like, make yourself useful with this data. They're like, <laughs> here. I was like, I, well, how do you find yeah. the answers to anything they're looking for? So that makes a lot more sense. The answer is always in the data they give you. So you're not doing like yeah, sometimes. Yeah, crazy usually. research. And, and unless like, like you said, you had to call their people and actually ask them certain things. But like, right, right. For the most right. part, yep. they it, it's there. Yeah, that's just like that. That I just yeah, I have a hard time understanding the purpose of paying a data analyst. Like as as an employee, I would totally just like pawn that off on like someone else, and like someone else would probably hate me for doing that. Like. I guess it would depend on how much their workload is, but yeah, I would I would tell you that you would be surprised how many people would not be able to be a data analyst, like just based on the basic Excel Excel skills alone that it would probably That's take. That's crazy, just on the Excel skills alone. It's yeah. Excel. Yeah. But I guess I know. I I've been using Excel for like my entire life, so I guess it's different. Right. Not everyone is like. Most that. people are not using Excel for almost anything. <laughs> that's funny yeah i use it for my video games my personal life my business life everything so it's like how do you not know how to like <laughs> organize the data but it does make sense yeah i i didn't always know these things and especially sql querying no i will yeah. pay someone fifty thousand dollars for that and then the yeah. moment you said those words i'm like okay you're like okay <laughs> he was like okay yeah <laughs> he was like wait okay, no. you pull data you talk to that. people that's shit you know some SQL? All right, fifty thousand. Yeah, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, say no more. But like, so, so it's fu so funny you say that because like, if you could understand Excel, if if I just showed you what it was like after ten, like like options, like if I showed you for like ten minutes what it is, I I am a hundred percent sure that you could do it. Like, because what, what SQL? Yeah. Honestly, At least I might ask you to do that because I've tried to watch a couple of videos recently because I'm trying to it's see, just a I, language I'm learning programming yeah and SQL is also used for a lot of programs so I wanted to see if that would be like a good way to store any like my like user data and whatnot and I tried to look it up and watch it and I just like it, like I kind of understand it but at the same time I'm just like what do I do with this like yeah how do I how do you make it useful <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like I, right, how do I make it useful? And, like, I only watched one 15-minute video by some Indian dude. Not to say, like, that's bad or anything, but, like, I yeah, might have missed they... some of the words he was saying because of the accent. So it's just like, I don't know. Nah, I mean, man, it's I, true. I might, the Indian might people, they they rule when it comes to technology. I'm telling you, I've had, <laughs> I've had more, like, actual conversations about data with Indian people than, like, almost any other minority race. That's funny. Yeah, the the Indians, they know their their data management. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they know about it. Good for them. Nice. So you actually liked that. Like yeah, you I loved liked it. it. Yeah, I loved it. You I, loved it? So much so that when like when I when I told I don't know if I told you, but like my T D Ameritrade, like they don't they don't show you what your actual return is, like, for your account at all. They don't have any they don't have it anywhere. So like I just pulled the data out of there and I just made my own like spreadsheet to track it. And I like enjoyed making it. <laughs> That's funny. I actually also enjoy making spreadsheets, but I can't say I've ever made a spreadsheet for someone else 
and enjoyed it but like i can't like the only time i've made a spreadsheet for someone else it's always just been like i take my own notes that's already in spreadsheet form and just like email it to him i might like spell check something so i've never done like a a deep dive like starting from like just raw like like unorganized data into oh, something okay. that's like nice in excel for someone else and i feel like in a way like it, it would be kind of like my own thing because it is it's your work it's like your right, own thing so right. Yeah. I, I get it, <laughs> but that is that's funny. That is, yeah, that well, funny. now you know what it is I was doing when I was working five years ago. Yeah, that makes you said, a lot more sense. You said you thought that I just walked around and talked to people, and you're like, yes or no, gets the deal done, and that's it. Like, wait, what? <laughs> what does that even no, mean? What I, what I legit thought is, like, you sat in a cubicle, and, like, I did. Someone would send you a report, and then you would just look at that report and be like, "Yep" or "Nope," and then you would email them back with that answer. And like yep. that's just what you would do all day for eight Tor hours a day. Towards the end of my job, that's very close to being true. <laughs> yeah, because once once more like managing other people came in, that's it, it. All went to shit. Like that, it basically became. It went from data, find all the insights to. Yeah, you still need to do that, but before you do that, there are four people over here who are not sure of what they're doing, and the people <laughs> they're working with also don't think they know what they're doing. So if you could just convince them that the other person knows what they're doing, like, it was just so bad. Like, being a manager <laughs> of anything is just so bad. Yeah, yeah. At least, at least it wasn't my like... experience. Yeah, being a manager is a lot different. Even though you're still a manager of data analysts, like you're not data analyzing anymore. You're just no. dealing with these idiots essentially. And like yeah. obviously they might not be idiots, but like as someone as experienced as yourself and as most people who get or at least most people I would hope get promoted to be a manager. Yeah, they're usually just good at the job and then they get promoted and then now you're expected to do use a whole new set of like functions as a manager and do your old job it's just like usually no one likes that like i've never met someone who's been like yeah I, I got promoted and i still do what i did and i have to manage people and i love it i've never heard someone say that ever in my entire life like usually there's like this is hard and then eventually there's like i hate it i hate this, <laughs> yeah, I hate this. so yeah that's yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta keep your managers to be managers, and your right. your data analysts be data analysts. And, yeah, when, and like, that's exactly right. The word data analyst, I literally just thought at most you were looking at some data, and then you would just come up with your own analysis in your head, and just be like, yeah, that's. <laughs> what would <laughs> like, be the point? I had no idea you were like organizing things or like making things in like a certain way or yeah. like picking certain things out, like. Yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. Like he's just he just looks at stuff and just yeah. And then and then in my job, I had five, at one point I had five clients, right? So like our our company just gets clients that so that we so that they they need us to hire people for them, and they just they just scoop up every client they can to do that for them. So basically, like I was working with six different companies, basically, and six different teams of ours. And all and doing that for all six teams. So there would be six different people calling me, and then the other four people that I was supposed to be responsible for. Like so, yeah, we were. It's just it's insane how underpaid I was. I I really can't believe I let them do that to me. Crazy. I'm surprised you like it, but. Yeah, the the but like you said, it's it. I was an analyst. That's what I liked. So like, I don't mind being the best analyst and getting just paid for that. But the moment the upward trajectory only becomes management, then I'm done. Like that's the I need to just understand. That's my cap. Like I don't want to manage people. Whereas Danielle, I think Danielle could really. She I think she could be a great manager, or she is a great manager. So yeah, like I just I just didn't stay in my lane. That was the mistake. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is interesting. I hear that. I feel like that happens a lot. Like you you see you see like oh a management like that's a promotion technically. Usually you might get paid more sometimes. Yeah. Like and it's like yeah, I want to try that out. But then you do it and it's like this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like y you covet the manager's position and at the same time it's like a terrible position to be in. <laughs> it's just like a lose lose situation basically. Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, that makes sense. They learn new things. That's always good. But is there <laughs> anything else? Uh, did you do anything interesting besides podcasting, Gouda? Uh, no, not really. But I will say that I think it's also kind of hard on the like business owner side or the director, whoever is like ahead of the 
the managers because I think they get told that you're doing a good job if your subordinates are doing a good job. Right. So sometimes yeah. you kind of force people to like get promoted because you think it's your job to like I don't know, <laughs> to, like help their career flourish and stuff like that. Right. And like CEOs go to they go to like <laughs> leadership conferences and they tell them shit like that. They're like, yeah, your whole team needs to be flourishing and you need to create a space where their career can blossom under your tutelage and all this shit. So then they come back and they're like, yeah, hey, John, don't you want to be a manager? Uh, it pays better. You'll have more yeah. more <laughs> impact. And, like, they make it sound so good, but, like, how you're saying, Blurro, it's actually not that great. And more to your point, John, like, it's not a bad thing to, to just specialize, but somehow they made it that if there are too many people specializing in your business, somehow you're a bad, like, leader. But that's not the case at all. And and hopefully that will change eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely felt like exactly what you said. Like, yeah, it was like, oh, look at this is an opportunity for you to grow. You'll make more money. And I did. I made more money. Like, I I went from basically like 35000 to like fifty. Like, like, so it, it felt like a lot of money at the, t- like, at the time. I was just like, this is insane. But yeah, like I had no idea what that position was actually worth. So yeah, it was it was especially at the time because they they spun it to be like we weren't really managers like so we didn't have manager titles they just called us like leads or or like team like like not even team lead it was like a senior whatever whatever but then like you were also the pod leader of these people they just called them pods even though they were they were tell they were asking you anytime anything went wrong you still weren't their manager so it's just like yeah like if i had known i probably would have just like guda said i would have I wasn't honest with myself about the fact that what I loved about it wasn't that part. And I I just didn't see that until I was already in it. And it was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think, I, I just kind of wish, because like how John was saying, there's a lot of things about the job that you like get trained on or that you actually enjoy that is way separate than the actual like workplace politics. And that's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what ruins it. Like you just want to <laughs> you just want to be good at what you do, but in order to do that, you have to fit into this new like atmosphere and yeah, I I don't know, like I felt like things were getting better when the pandemic hit and everyone was allowed to like work remotely, so some of that kind of got tempered, but I do like realize and w- I do realize and see that there are people that do kind of need that um, face-to-face teamwork aspect to be able to work effectively. Um, but yeah, I, I I just think if you're in a role that's specialized like that, like that's just I just feel I just don't understand why it's such a bad thing. Like it's that should be that's good. Like isn't that what you want? <laughs> don't yeah. you want people that are really good at what they do why are you trying to like yeah put them in the babysitter position just because they've been doing really well for a long time usually just because there's no there's usually no other upward mobility and i think that's the part that people have a hard time with like if you know that the top of your range at a company that you love to be at let's assume that you love to be there and like let's say the job that you really love doing there only pay like will max out at like forty thousand dollars let's say like for people who have like gone to school for a long time to like do this thing or or for some reason they're like trained they they got trained in it while they were there i feel like that's just a hard reality to to accept so yeah i think people normally go for more money and upward mobility because they feel like the money will make up for the parts of the job they don't like yeah i think that's I think that's messed up. I think we should change that. That the only way to get more worth out of your work is to go into a position that makes you uncomfortable or has nothing yeah. to do with the thing that you specialized in for all yeah. those years before you got there. And less effective make any because sense. of that, too. It like, doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And you're definitely less effective because of that. Like, 
if like if you're not if you don't come to work with the same enthusiasm like it's not that I went to work every single day like yeah man I'm gonna find some shit in this data today like no it wasn't like that but like I did get excited about like some of the visual the tools we were like the tools we were using and like just the ways we were able to show certain things like if you're really good with data you can almost tell like a story from beginning to end if you're looking at a certain mm -hmm. period so like that was the part that I really enjoyed but I like I just never got there because it's just like it's so much other bullshit that you have to deal with to even get to a place where you can be in the tools and like get the, and then the moment you do good just like you said they're like hey why don't you come and deal with this other bullshit that we know you hate yep. <laughs> yeah yeah like... it should just be that that like once you are like a proven specialist in your field you just get a i think i'm probably just gonna about to describe unions you get a <laughs> like a locked rate like raise there is no cap to how much you can make if you are like a 50 year veteran at data analytics then you get paid more than someone that's done it for like a year and yeah i don't think it wait, works so based, I, wait so based on time i would i don't know if i'd do it based on time well i'm saying like i'm just assuming that by you doing it longer that you're more skilled yeah, there could be a case that someone's been doing I, it for a long time that's yeah. not very good. Yeah, I was gonna say I can tell you from experience that is not the case. that is not always the case. Yeah, yeah. yeah so gener I'm, generally, though, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think yeah, if you can prove and have shown that you are the most skilled at that particular like job or labor, then yeah, I think your pay should be equal to that and if you want to stay specialized you shouldn't get locked at a certain like salary cap for that job yeah you should just like continue to get paid more and more to stay there and be good at it i, yeah, I feel like a lot of what you guys are describing of like what sucks about the positions and like what you guys didn't like it's like it's just literally it has nothing to do with, like, the parts you liked or, like, maybe the job itself. It's all the extra bullshit that, like, wasn't on the job posting when, or it wasn't on the interview. It, it wasn't something that they told you you were going to be doing every day in the way you were going to be doing it. Like, it, you didn't know that uh, you were going to have yeah. to deal with all these stupid people. And th that's the reason also why companies kind of don't like when you work at home is because you can't do and fix all the random br bullshit and problems if you're at home. Like, how are, how is your boss supposed to just walk by, see you just doing whatever, and then be like, oh, you're not busy right now. Start doing this. Start solving this problem for me. How can he do that if you're just at home and he doesn't know what you're doing and supposedly you're already busy working? He, he can't. So, like, I think the part that you don't like about these jobs is the part where you get taken advantage of by your employer because yeah. otherwise of known what as you're corporate able to do right yeah. it's just the corporate life essentially i mean it's just the employee life like if you're an hourly employee especially and if you have to go to work like that is why the employers do it so like you can solve not only what you were hired to do but now you can also be told to do other things like exactly what i was saying i was like i'm going to make someone else do this analyst job like someone who's yeah. not even I didn't even hire to do that. I would just make them do it. And like that's what's best for business. It's not and I even admitted that the person that I would make do this is probably not going to like it. Like but as far as making money and like that's how you would do it essentially. So really like you guys are right. Like there is no reason if you're good at being a data analyst or whatever you do that you shouldn't get paid uh like a fair wage and you should be able to work wherever you want as long as you get the job done whether that's at the office and that's or that's home true or that, that's true for most data analysts now and that's good that's definitely because the job is but all like, it's all on the computer i mean but yeah and like me as the employer like i should be happy that you are doing exactly what i asked you to do and that kind of goes back to like this whole like quiet quitting thing and like barely like I forget what they call it, but, like, where you don't try hard on Mondays. Like, you, we're just now realizing, like, that entire sentiment is just doing what you've been asked to do to begin with. And, like, it's like we're finally kind of realizing as, like, a society, especially young people, that, like, 
hey, it's kind of bullshit that like you get hired to be a data analyst, but then when you get to the job, now you're just roped into doing all this other well, stuff that has nothing to do with well, being in a data the analyst. So in the company's defense, it's not like they don't. So they, they always make sure, like the, in any person in recruiting will know, know this. It is always that last bullet point on every single <laughs> fucking job application. And it says other duties as assigned. Yep. You know what that means? Anything yeah. they fucking want it to mean. So, just so you know, it was in the contract that you saw. You just didn't pay much attention to it. And it's <laughs> and it's not like I didn't know I would have to deal with bullshit or like deal with like relationships and stuff like that. I knew that was gonna be a part of it. It just it, it would seem to me that if we had enough time to like just get things in motion and get things done appropriately, that those those kind of conversations could quiet down. The problem was that as I got it, the moment I stepped into it, all those conversations were already happening. Like all of the fires were already lit. And anytime you try to spray one, there would just be a person that would just be staring at you, extinguishing it while they're lighting the other one, staring you in the <laughs> eyes. They don't even care. Like that's, that's the crazy part of it. It's like, you yeah. know, these things that you're doing are putting us at a disadvantage and you just don't like, not even that you don't care, but you obviously care more about the perception of the client and the revenue and all that other shit than you do like putting your workers at a disadvantage. That is exactly correct because yeah. they don't care how stressful it is. Right. They, they know as their as the boss that if you were given enough time, you could actually clean it up and make everything nice, but they would have to not take in a sale during that time, give you time to clean it up, and then pay you while that's happening, while not making as much money as they would normally make if they could just keep the sales coming in and just keep piling the work on all the employees and whoever cracks, cracks, and then they just hire a new one and replace it. Like, it's brutal. But, like, yeah, it is interesting. Like, is it... <laughs> yeah, I guess from what you're trying to say is, in a way, you kind of knew that it would be like that. I did. I just and... didn't realize to what extent. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... I feel like at a certain point, and, and a lot of it, a lot of it seems where do we self stop blaming the employee and start blaming the employer and say, "Hey, this is just unacceptable. Like, let's let's not do this as employers." And a, and a lot of companies that have that problem, I feel like it, a lot of it is self inflicted. Like, it's it's not like yeah. you don't have the time or don't have the resources. And especially, I know this is true in the company that I was at because every time we we would all would be sat down for these financial meetings and we would all see these record numbers every fucking quarter. And I'm always like. Like that's great, but then they're just hiring more people and hiring more people because they keep getting more clients. It's just like a rate, like a sales race. Like they just like as yeah. soon as we'd have extra money, we'd send it out the door to do to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So like yeah, mm -hmm. it just it it felt like we were kind of do I was kind of doomed from the start. I didn't see it obviously when I was in it, but after like you know when I had my come to Jesus moment about my job, I was like man, <laughs> this is not gonna that's get any better funny. like ever. <laughs> like I can't like Wait, is that. I had three promotions at that place in two and a half years, and I was just like, I just feel worse. Like this is the, this is not the good. The exact same story with my wife when she worked last time she worked at a corporation. She literally yes, like three promotions, and at the end of it, her work life had never been worse. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and that's just crazy. Yeah. And Did like it, it's funny you... when she finally quit, it was during COVID, and it, what they what made her quit is the epitome of what I'm talking about. When the employer doesn't care about the stresses of the employee, they just want to make that money. And like her job where she was, it was like a client facing job, so like people can come into the shop and like talk directly to her. And COVID had just kicked out, so like obviously she didn't want like anyone just coming into the shop. She's like, can we put an intercom in? And they're just like, they're super reluctant. And then at the end of the day, they're just like, no, like, mm -hmm. we don't care about what you're risking. Like, you do this or you can go get a new job, essentially. Like, they don't care. Yeah. Like, and she got a new job and they just replaced her immediately with, like, the next, like, sucker who <laughs> is willing to do that. So it's just like, yeah, they didn't, they did not care about her safety, her stresses, nothing. Like, they wanted to make sure that their uh, uh, clients can walk in the door and give them more money whenever they wanted to. So it's just like I mean, I'm yeah, not I'm not about. mad at you if you do that. I like I, I'm not going to be like I'm a capitalist too. So I, I'll I'll be real like the game is the game. I get it. I just I just don't want to be a part of that like the game being played that way. Like that's kind of, that I would say that's my line. Like if you cuz I think So you can play that game as long as you play it over there. Right, yeah, I'm I'm good if you play it over because because I don't want to if other people that's are willing. On the other side. Well, that's the thing. If other people are willing to step into your job, 
knowing the the harshness they're going to go through and they're still willing to do it then then that's on them it's not my job to like stand in the way of that if you're gonna if you want to do that if that that's fine but like i i just don't want to do that like i'm i'm okay like i just feel like it kind of hurts the business to an extent to like looking be looking to suck profits out of every single thing that that seems like that seems more detrimental to profits than it does <laughs> beneficial because sometimes i feel like you have you should make an investment in your people and in the things they do and stuff like your building all that kind of stuff like the intercom like the intercom just seems like a good that just seems like a good investment even if it wasn't covid like like why right. you could use that for other things like i, I don't know i just <laughs> like and it wasn't even that expensive it was very cheap like right yeah, I, I don't know. Man. So like, yeah, that's an example to me where like you're just you're you're just like cutting off your nose to spite your face. Like it just seems like you're just being dumb for no reason. But yeah, Gudo, you were gonna say something. Sorry, I slipped in there. Uh, I was just gonna ask if the the place where you worked before were they publicly traded? No. Uh, okay, that's. And yeah, that's a good point. I, who owns the company is a very good point. Yeah. The original founders, the, they always say this, whenever the original founders are in the company still, it's different. Whether it's a good or a bad thing, it's always different. And once the next people, because whoever buys the company and they're not the founders, you're not in it. You're usually not in it with your heart. You're in it for money. You bought this company because you thought it could make you money. But if you founded the company, you do love it. And maybe there's a chance that you will slow things down as far as bring as far as making sales and give your employees and your people a chance to breathe to make their lives and the company run better but like yeah. once someone else buys that like they don't care yeah it's just like yeah you don't even care about who's suffering you just want to make sure that you get that return on your investment that what you paid for that company and that's it period like and you're so high up you're you're behind so many walls usually like if you're like an owner of like a company that's already been sold or something like it, the employees can't even talk to you they have to go through their boss who then goes to their boss who then goes um, to the ceo I who still, then goes so to the board i can then finally you can reach out to the owner so it's just like, i can yeah. i can tell you the company i was at it did have the original owner at the time that i was there i don't know if uh that person's still there now and this woman uh had previously sold a company doing the exact same thing she just started a new one she sold it and started a new one so mm -hmm. yeah that's kind of yeah that's not much better she was i would say she was accessible to, to an extent like it seemed like she made an effort to make people think she could talk to them um but yeah there was just a disconnect between the image that i saw of her and like how things were actually run yeah I, and the company my wife worked for was also still run by the founder and she she was a whip cracker though like she did not give a fuck get over like, here bitch come do this she work did not care yeah she was every she had like 80 some locations i want to say all across like the midwest and everyone had to make money period like there were no excuses if you weren't making money you got fired and replaced and so i was like yeah, she didn't care she, she was not she was a founder but she did not <laughs> care about the employees but i feel like that doesn't have to necessarily be every company. And, like, maybe there's a company out there that, like, <laughs> they they don't let it. Like, my company, in, for instance, like, I try not to do that, like, which is why I'm still small and I'm not filthy rich yet. So, like. Yeah, I would I would know. say from what I hear about Danielle's experience, I'm not going to, like, out where she works. I mean, I don't know. She probably doesn't care. But I, I feel like her company is public. Her, so her company is publicly traded. And I, from what I can see, it doesn't seem like um they don't value people like if it sounds like people there like stay for a long time they r kind of rarely have layoffs and like they're always um Dan danielle says that like the pace there is just like way slower than what her and i were used to at the old company and not in a bad way not like oh man they just don't do anything it was like they take their time and don't feel like they need to rush. That's nice. And they are publicly traded. That's they nice. are, yeah. Now I want to know what company it is to see. I'll tell, I'll tell you after. Is it a profitable I'll... company? Have you looked that up? Uh, yeah, I have. I, yeah. I, yeah, they, so technically, yeah, they're profitable, but like, they're, they're trending in the wrong direction. Okay, interesting. 
Yeah. How old is that company? Do you know? Um, <laughs> I don't know how old this variation of it is, but this uh, this company used to be a, a a bigger company that split off its divisions. Oh, again, I like... again, I don't want to mention okay. the parent company because you'll know you'll know what that is too. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it doesn't even matter. Like, no, okay. <sighs> yeah, yeah, she's not like it doesn't it doesn't like matter. That. No one's. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't I don't want to I don't want to dox my wife. That's okay. I'll tell you I after. Ask yeah, I want to. Yeah, just to be safe. I don't think <laughs> I don't think it matters, but just to be safe, she probably doesn't. I mean, she has a public pro like profile, I guess that. Their website. Well, hopefully they still keep doing good, because I mean, like you said, I feel like if you have employees that have been working there for a long time, that's usually gonna save you money because right. you don't have to like rehire people, you don't have to retrain people. Yep. So like in a way, treating your employees good is the most capitalist and best way to make your money back. Assuming assuming those those employees are actually performing, yes. Right, assuming they're performing. Because yeah, I can, right. I can tell you, there's a lot of non-performers too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's never gonna work yeah, under any circumstance. But yeah, as long as they're performing and you treat them well, like you can still make money. Like you don't, you don't. Yeah, but do things but like not enough. 18th century, like we're in like a you know, not like an, oil drilling days. Not enough money though, because I gotta meet those analyst estimates so that my stock price will go up so that the investors will be happy because that's what it's all about oh my God. money 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 all about the money yeah, all right man. well i guess that wraps it up unless you guys want to add anything else yeah money money uh, <laughs> yeah just add a little bit of money yeah what do you think gouda I still don't get why the, the only way to get more money is to get <laughs> promoted into a job that you don't like or know anything about. How does that? How does that help the business? It doesn't. They just need to <laughs> as stop far as the that. employee. Yeah, that's yeah. true. If because, you take your well, from, star recruiter and turn them into a manager, well, well, monetarily, then not be a recruiter anymore. Monetarily, it actually does. It does help. Uh, so like you pay. You pay a lot less for to promotions on on average, I believe, than you do for um, a rehire. A, re, a rehire because rehires always command more money, always. Yeah, but you you know what? Someone someone put a data analyst on how long people stay after they get promoted, as opposed to someone that's just hired into the managerial role. I'd like to see that data. On how long people stay on, on across like everything, how long people stay if they're promoted? Yeah, yeah. My hypothesis for that data would be that people who are hired into managers would stay longer because I'm assuming they know what to expect, and people who got promoted would burn out quicker. That's my theory. Same. Yeah. And yet you're saying that I don't know. That's that is what. That's the rule. They do promotions because that makes more business sense. But does it? It doesn't seem like it does. Right. Well, it, it also is correct. it also depends on the person though. Like the person also has to accept that role. Like I like I said. Like yeah, is it kind of shitty that my that the company I was with like didn't have a way for me to continue to like learn more about data and do that like with that with without basically making it so that I couldn't get any more money. Like, yeah, that's kind of shitty, but, like, also, I, I accepted the position. Like, I went in knowing that I was going to have to deal with that. And I still said okay, because I thought that it wouldn't be worth it. So, like, I feel like the other part of it is people have to be honest with themselves about what they really want and what they like out of a position. Like, I don't think I was really honest with myself. I just thought I could figure out how to manage people and it'll be fine. And the reality is, even as a good manager, I would want to do it. Yeah. It just I wasn't mean... for me. Yeah, for every person that finds that out, there's always someone who's a couple years younger who's just getting started. Who's right. Like, yeah, give me the job. So exactly. So then they yeah. just never change anything. But like, yeah, like usually once you find out, you never go back to being treated like that. Like, but yeah, it's eh, that's just no. the way of the world, I guess. But hey, it won't happen to you anymore. You right? Yeah. You've been there, done that. Yeah, I'd be much happier doing more. contract work with with a bunch of random Excel spreadsheets. Hit yeah. me up if you want me to analyze your spreadsheets, guys. <laughs> yeah, make yeah, make sure if you're an employee, it's worth it for you. Yep.
All right, well, I guess that wraps up our season finale of our... I don't know what season this even is, but it's the end. 70. Until next season. <laughs> it's the winter season. Time. That's what it is. Yes, season winter. 2022 to 2023 winter. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, we'll be back in probably like... I want to say like a month, maybe three weeks or something, depending on what's going on. So for sure, by April, somewhere in April, first week of you, April, I think that's probably... You, wait, 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 hold on. on. You think you'll be back by April? I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah. No, no, no. No, no, not you. Valero, wait, Valero. You think we're you're going to have time to do the podcast in a month? Oh, I mean, like... I assume, but maybe not. Like, I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, yeah, you might. You're right. You might. I just assume that you're going to take at least a few weeks. I mean, yeah, I guess, like, I don't even know what to expect here. Oh, yeah, we're talking about, like, the fact that <laughs> I'm about to have a kid, like, at the end of this month. Or, like, really at any second. I, I was going to say, like, literally any moment it could happen. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, this is my first kid, so I don't know, like, what I'm in for, really. I mean, I do, but, like, I don't. So yep. I'm assuming that I'll you be able poor to... lass. <laughs> I'll be able to find a couple hours to record a podcast on Wednesday night. But you're right. Maybe I won't. And maybe I will not be back in April. So if that's the case, and you don't <laughs> see us back in April, you know, yep, uh, the, the dad life. That's what yeah. got him. But... <laughs> I'm coming back no matter what. There's no way I'm letting that be a forever thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as she's sleeping long enough, uh, yeah, I will be here. Sweet. But probably April. I'm still shooting for April. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, guys. I think that wraps it up. Another successful we'll see you season. We get back. Bye bye. See ya.